Shalom, brothers and sisters. I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 17. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. And in this life only we have hope in Christ, we of all men the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, after with those who are Christ's at his coming. The first Adam brought death, the second Adam brought life. And then if you turn with me to Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And he will appear really, really soon. We, we cannot wrap our minds around the price he paid to ransom us and give us salvation. We can't. And, and I know in this earthly, mortal, broken and tattered, falling apart tent that I'm in at the moment, I can't handle to have the full view of what my God suffered for me to give me hope. But, once I am resurrected with him in the rapture, and I have that new body, and he has been with me and holding my hand, I would like to see the price he paid for me, so that I can fully comprehend how awesome that is, because I don't think we can even imagine what he paid to give us all life. None of us could do what he did at all. Uh, I had a spiritual mentor slash father many, many years ago when I was a very young man. And he had an experience. He prayed and prayed and prayed and called on God and asked God, can you please show me the crucifixion? And one day out of the blue, God comes and takes him out of his body and he has an out of body experience with God and he takes him to the cross. And he sees part of the crucifixion. He sees our Lord on the cross. And he described one or two things that I can't even imagine, but it ties up beautifully with Scripture. I mean, when Jesus says in the Old Testament, I can count all my bones, that is the kind of damage his body had taken just from the whip. And he saw these things and he was devastated. He took ages to recover from that experience. And when he eventually did recover and we were sitting together one day, he said to me, you know what, Sholto, God is faithful and he listens and he hears. And if you pray to see him, see something amazing, you might get exactly what you asked for. But promise me you'll never ask to see the crucifixion because it is too much. It was just too much. He, he couldn't even begin to comprehend the horror and what God went through for us. So yes, I never asked to see that. And like I said, I'll wait until I get up there before I see it. When I have a bit more strength and I'm holding his actual hand. Then he can show me. But we, we can't even begin to understand the depth of his love for us. I and mean, I've said this many times. When we see how we reject him. How we turn to evil as a species. How we keep disappointing him how we keep 
hating and railing against him in the heavens. I would have called it quits ages ago if I was in charge. If anyone wanted my advice, I would have said just uncreate the whole ball and be done with it. Call it a day. It's not worth it. But that's not God. God loves us with a love we cannot even begin to comprehend. The depths of that love would drown us in the very top layer and then there would still be depths that we can't even fathom of his love for us. And that is why we are sold out and living for him 190% no matter what comes against us or stands before us. We gratefully thank him for what he did for us on that cross and when he rose in victory. You know, uh, besides the cross and, and how horrifying that experience was that he went through for us and how powerful it is now, it was foreshadowed in the Old Testament. Another thing that always comes to mind for me specifically, and I've said a lot of times before when I'm talking about 2030, the devil knows the exact date of the crucifixion because for him it was supposed to be his day of victory. His big, big win. He knows what date that was on. And when Christ closed his eyes and breathed his last and said, it is finished. And the devil and his demons started celebrating and rejoicing and just screeching their happiness. Before the penny dropped and they realized how bad things were about to go for them. Immediately, if I could see those expressions on their faces, I would be grateful. Because I don't know if you've ever played a computer game or watched your children play computer games. There's a thing in computer games called God Mode. Where you switch off all damages and all everything. You're all powerful. Nothing can touch you. You can do anything. You can fly. You can destroy anything. You're, you're untouchable. When Jesus laid down that flesh and they were celebrating that they'd won. Meanwhile... All restrictions are now off. And they're dealing with God the Son. Who has just declared victory over everything. And he's coming for them. How horrified must that look on their faces have been when they realized they were dealing with Yeshua in God mode. <laughs> Uh, it's just epic, epic. And that's the only way they're going to encounter him going forward as well, is just full God mode. And that's awesome for me, because I get to stand behind him while he does these things. And I get to watch and enjoy the victory we will totally have in the end of the day against all evil, all things that have been done to you in this life, all things that have been brought against you in this life, you will have victory and satisfaction in that final encounter that's coming in seven years' time when we come back with him and see that final victory. And that's something to look forward to being excited about as well. So we embrace what he did for us on the cross. We embrace specifically that he rose. He is the only one who has ever risen his grave is empty. I have been to that grave. I have seen there that grave. I have had my hands running from the grave through the cracks in the wall there. I've looked inside there where he lay. And I can tell you I could feel the presence of God there. It was amazing. I have seen the empty tomb that could not hold my God at all. I have seen where that victory took place, where that stone was rolled away. I've seen it. It is real, it is amazing, it is all-powerful, and it is what has rocked creation. Our God reigns for all time, and we are in Him, and our minds are to be on Him above, not on things of the earth. That is why we are focused on Him, on the rapture, on the promise of His coming, our lamps burning bright, because Jesus is almost here. Anytime, anytime soon. Keep your lamps burning. Keep holding on to that blessed hope and keep looking up. We all get to hang out in the naughty corner soon. God bless and shalom. <laughs>